this afternoon with Harold Herbert, uh, a Montauk businessman who has been here, worked in the town of Montauk uh, for over 40 years. Herb is a businessman, a husband, a father, a volunteer fireman, a past Grand Marshal of our wonderful St. Patrick's Day Parade. I welcome you. Um, Harold Herbert is known to everyone in town as Herb. Herb, welcome. Thank this you. is your life today. <laughs> uh, you could start off, if you would, with uh, where you were born, where you grew up, and all of your feelings about all of that, and then we will go continue. I was born in Southampton. Went to Southampton school system. Graduated uh, 1955. Off to college for four years, a diploma in one hand and a draft notice in the other. <laughs> so off I went to the service in, in 60. Uh, I went in October of 60. Prior to that, in June of 60, I joined the North Sea Fire Department. Uh, returned in 62. Um, moved to Montauk. I was looking for a, a business, found it here. And moved here in March of 63. Uh, when I moved here, I had card table, two chairs, a bunk, and a bed in my apartment upstairs, a 1,600 square foot apartment, and that was it. <laughs> um, Where was that business, sir? On Main Street, and, uh, next to what is now the Shadwan Tavern. It was uh, a Tumas, originally, and uh, after that, uh, Woods had it, Walter and Woods and all. Um, I came in 63, I forget when Jimmy came. He was, he was after me. After that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris and I, my wife, she worked for the previous owner. In fact, today I found her working papers that was 1962 <laughs> from Bob Heil, who I bought the business from. And I brought him to her and she sort of chuckled at the, looking at the statistics on it. Uh, we were married in 64, and years ago when uh, Janice Hewitt was interviewing us for Star, I made the comment that the reason that I married her was that I couldn't afford to pay her, so I married her. And Janice said, you can't do that. Said, of course we can. And to this day, we still get about that. You know, we couldn't afford it. It was just the, uh, you know. And Christine is in well in accord with that. Oh, no, absolutely. Remark. We laugh about it. We have, we have the article hanging on our wall at the, at the house. So. And uh, of course, children followed, too. And uh, now it's four grandchildren, as we all know. Right. Tell me a little bit about the business when you uh, purchased it. What did you say, 1963? 1963, yes. It was actually just a grocery store, a meat market. Uh, delicatessens in those days were not the norm. Yeah. And uh, over a period of time, we, we did the back of the store, as you walk in it now, was a garage. And we knocked that out, knocked a few walls out. and extended the store and then rolled over more into a delicatessen full market, but uh, deli was the thing that put us over. Tell me about some of your customers, some of the people that work there, some of your memories about the store. I know you're retired now, you and Chris. Um, try to think back about some of the ups and some of the downs. Well, the downs, I think, were, <laughs> were winters. Uh, winters were long, no one here. I really remember taking and having a, a like guy on the front and back door. And when a customer came, I would either be downstairs doing something or Chrissy would be upstairs and we'd go and wait on him. There was no such thing as staying in the store because there was no one there. And there were days where you might have six or seven or eight customers. And uh, that, was, that was the downside. And then later, I think the downside was getting busier because you didn't have time to do the things that Montauk's so famous for. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, so. it, it, it makes the rest possible. You know. So tell me about um, your involvement in the community, uh, you and Chris, Christine, and um, how all of this over 40 years have evolved. Well, I've been in the fire department to this day, so it's been 45 years as a volunteer fireman. Um, love doing it. It's a community to itself, and we have a lot of good friends. Met a lot of good friends over the 
over the years. In fact, uh, as we've spoken about years ago, when none of us went on vacations, we were all you know, struggling, so to speak. And Sunday afternoon was, you bring something and I'll bring something to the firehouse. And we'd all have a potluck at the firehouse. And that went on for a number of years. Yeah. Oh, God, how I remember all of that. <laughs> uh, very true. It's, uh, it's a different place today. Yes, it is. Uh, but I would also say, and I think you would agree, that the winters can be, if you have a business, <laughs> still, long still long and hard. Yeah. But uh, people say to me now, you know, now that you're retired, are you, you know, packing up and going to Florida? I said, my gosh, no. I've been waiting 40 years to enjoy Montauk. And here we are, 1st of March. I haven't been anywhere and don't tend to for a while. <laughs> you know, the winters aren't, you know, aren't so bad, really. Tell me about um, your hobbies, what you do, um, and what you've done over the 40-some-odd years here or elsewhere. Right, well, um, when the kids were younger, of course, the only vacation we could take was in February. We would close for a short period of time, go to Florida or whatever. As they grew older, we still went in February. I follow NASCAR, do a lot of, go to a lot of races, Daytona and Talladega and whatever. Um, I'm sure some of the city people are like this, but my passion is, is hunting. I love, <laughs> I love to go hunting, and it's you know, I love to walk in the woods, I like fishing. I'm outdoors all the time. Yeah. If I don't take a walk every day, I'm, I feel really, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm deprived somehow. Uh, tell me, do you avail yourself of the hunting season here in Montauk? Yes, I do. You do. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Is it? Um, Right, is there a lot to hunt? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there is, actually. Most people uh, with a the deer, they see deer running everywhere, including in the library here and all. But you go out in the woods where you can hunt, which is limited. Uh, east of East Lake Drive, in the woods, in the deep woods. There, there isn't that many deer in there. They're in your yard, your yard, you know, everybody's yeah. yard, my yard, eating. So the, the problem, and you can't do anything about it, is... You can't hunt there, so it's, you know, we do have problems. Do you think uh, the animal itself is smart enough, it knows that that area is sort of like <laughs> a red zone, and um, they don't go there? I often claim they dig holes, or they have calendars, and they just, you know, <laughs> they're gone. But it's, no, I think there's less in some of those areas. Is there... The food supply is not in those areas like it is around yards. And you go down East Lake Drive, where the houses are, it's like Russian roulette driving an automobile. Tell me, is there a, a large number or a good number of hunters that avail themselves? And what is the season here? The well, season here is uh, uh, bow hunting is October, November, and December. Three months, actually. Two months, I think, on public land. Three months on private land. Uh, January, during the week only, is hunting with a gun, with a gun shotgun. And that is only in limited areas. That's just Hither Woods and East of East Lake Drive. And is there a permit process oh, yeah. that has to <laughs> yeah. You always need a backpack to put all the permits and, and all in. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you want to do, a permit's needed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we usually carry a big Ziploc bag, and we're just full of all kinds of permits. All right. um, tell me about, um, let me go back a little bit. You said you were in the service. Were you in the service in the States? Were you, uh, where were you? Okay. I guess um, Got drafted, went to Fort Dix, New Jersey, took basic. From there, Fort Bliss, Texas, and from there, Germany. And I was in Germany when the Berlin Wall was, was uh, put up. I actually have pictures of that going up. And it was right in that beginning of the NOM. You know, NOM had just started toward the end of my, you know, we started hearing about what was going on there. And I got out in October of 62. Do you remember any feelings of the people in Germany with that wall going up or anything at all as a young man? Did anything kind of hit you between the eyes? Yeah, the, certainly the, the West Berliners were, not, actually both of them were not very happy about it at that point. Mm -hmm. But I didn't spend that, I only spent like a week there. Um, for, I was stationed yeah. elsewhere in Germany. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, you've had a very incredible uh, well, then, time. If anybody knows my wife, because she was born in Germany, I said, oh, these Germans, they know how to work pretty good. So again, you know, <laughs> I didn't bring her home with me, but she, as we always say, she came with a store. You know? Yeah, she certainly did. Um, we've been 
friends a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. You and I and Christine, and um, you're an incredible couple. Worked very oh, hard yeah. and um, ran a great business. It's still and will always be Herb's Market. Oh, yeah. It's like Bill's Inn. If I say Bill's in, you time yourself because people don't have a clue. It'll always Ooh, be Bill's in to me. To me, it's always Bill's in. I have, you know, what is it called? A windjammer or, you know. We have to say East that North East, but edits that, but today it's E&E. E&E, um, yeah. Uh, on edge, yeah. yeah. Um, tell me about um, when you and Christine were married at first, you lived, as you said, above the store. Mm -hmm. Tell me what life was like Actually, on Main Street. All right, it was actually wonderful. The kids loved it too because the, everything happens there. They could walk anywhere. They had all their friends, they had lots of friends because they'd go to open, we'd have ice cream, we had this and that. But Chris and I really did it for a reason. It is because we wanted to see our children. I went to work every day at five all my life. Never got home until whenever we closed. And if we'd lived elsewhere, I'd have never seen my children. Here I actually saw them, they came through, I knew their friends and uh, you know, as we watched them grow up. Now, when Susan was a senior, we decided then that it was time to move on. But we, we lived there 20 years. And now we've lived where we are now, 20 years. And which doesn't uh, seem possible. I, I sort of remember that it was, um, there were many young families that were doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It was sort of a little oh, yeah. neighborhood, oh, yeah. so to speak. Dick White, yeah. across the street. Dick White and his kids. family. Yeah. And then when you had moved in, did they not as yes, well? Yes, they lived upstairs. upstairs. Oh, yeah, we had children. a children. Yeah, we had uh, the whole top floor full of kids in yeah. that one building. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's strange to think Montauk Highway, Main Street, um, but it, it was mm -hmm. a neighborhood, and everybody wanted to go to the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what about your girls? Where are they, and what's the story with right. um, both my oldest of them? Susan, oh, me. But my oldest Susan is in Virginia. Newport News, works for William and Mary College. She's a computer graphics, mm -hmm. does all that. And actually it's in the um, Maritime Division, it's a graduate school. It's right on the, where the James River comes into Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. uh, her husband's a lawyer. Uh, two children, two boys, one nine, one four. They're doing well then? They're doing fine, yeah. yeah they, they left here at Christmas. And we have a, you know, they come home? Okay. They come home, oh sure, sure. Yeah. And my other daughter, Gail, lives here. Gonna be building a house soon, so she's with us, and which is fine because her husband is in the merchant marine, so he's gone for four months at a clip. Oh, wonderful! So, in another another year, year and a half, they'll they're building up on the school. So, and a couple of grandchildren there. And yeah, yeah, we've got uh, a fifteen-month boy and a four-year-old girl. Okay, let's hit the fire department again. Um, just some of the in it's how it's run. Um, is it volunteer? Is it paid? What have you? Just a little bit of documentation about uh, the right. fire department. All right, strictly volunteer. Um, a big commitment to anyone who now goes into the fire department. I mean, when I went in in the 60s, uh, there wasn't the training or the equipment and all that we have now. And for anyone to go in now is, a, is, is really a, a big, big commitment. And uh, especially in the ambulance squad, they really you know, put in the time. And what I find, at least in my own mind, is that the way Montauk is, is, is growing, we're leaving out or pushing out those who are younger because they can't afford to stay here. They just, it's just, I mean, it actually scares me when I hear prices of houses and what have you. We have people in the fire department now leaving. We're good firemen, uh, just built a house, leaving. You know, packing up, going to Florida, they just can't make ends meet. They're fishing, and you know that is going down a little. Yeah. Even more restrictions, more restrictions, and you know it's it's sad. And I don't know where I don't know where it's going to end. I hear no, it more and more, oh, yeah. and um, I think with all of the assessed valuation and all of the huge prices that we hear, this is the other side of the coin, and it's very very difficult for mm -hmm. young people to start. Yeah, it really is. If their parents don't have property or something somewhere where they can get a somewhat of a small foundation, it's sort of gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually with our daughter. We were lucky enough years ago to purchase something and we, you know, in turn, yeah. turned it to her because otherwise they wouldn't be here. Yeah. 
I don't know where it's going to go no. myself because you and I both know, having worked our whole lives as adults anyway in a service business where you're taking care of the people in the town as well as the, um, the summer colony, that uh, without the young people to do and train for those jobs, um, I don't know where they're going to come from. No, no, it's, it's, it's really uh, a problem, major, major. I mean, you go anywhere, it's you know, mostly help I can see come from Springs or wherever. There's a lot, most of the store now come from, not in town. And I don't know where it's going. I really don't. Yeah, and even cool. in Springs now, and those places, price battles are going way up. Now it's not inexpensive to live there. Where years ago it was less. And you're only yeah. thinking about it being fair, not inexpensive or, you know, no. we've always no. lived in an area that has always been sort of choice, but it was within the means mm -hmm. of hard-working people to oh, be absolutely. able to buy property and build. We, uh, we were joking the other day, a bunch of us talking, and we were saying when I first came here, and somebody would say, well, I was looking over on East Lake Drive to build, and we'd all look at him and, what are you, nuts? I mean, East Lake Drive, that's way out there, yeah. windy as heck, and now, as you know, it's the place of choice for people who, who are building. <laughs> it's and the East Lake Drive, and the most, most expensive. expensive. Yeah. And in those days, you could have probably bought half of it for nothing. I mean, it was, who the heck wanted to be way out there? And now look at it. <laughs> if I said that once, I must have said it 20 times. Yeah, we only knew, huh? You could not afford no. your, your storm doors yeah. because they would be blown off every oh, yeah, day yeah. with East Lake Drive. And now, you, know, you go over there, <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, what, if, and off the, just the top of your shoulder, what would be some of your um, recommendations or suggestions to young people, to anybody moving into town here today? <laughs> Work hard, and you know, love the town. I mean, you gotta, you know, you gotta give back. Gotta give back. Yeah. I mean, I, I love this town. You couldn't drag me kicking and screaming out of here. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Tell me the difference between Southampton as a young boy. Now we're talking about the '40s and the '50s, and uh, Montauk uh, when you came. You were still very young. Um, basically, were the winters very similar, or were they different? We always thought, I always thought of Southampton as being no, actually, big time, big city when I came here. No, actually, uh, when we, we'd go to the movies at night before we had automobiles and ourselves driving, we'd hitchhike and seriously, I lived in North Sea, which was like five miles away. There were more than one night that I literally walked the entire way home and never had a car pass me. So it was quiet even then. You knew everybody in town. You know, and and when, where you lived in Southampton was close to the village? No, no, it was five miles out. North Sea. Five, oh, North Sea. Yeah. Uh, again, and it's sort of like, I guess, the kids from East Hampton, or from Montauk going to East Hampton, we were always called North Seers. You know, like, what the heck do you know? You're from North Sea. What are those deals? We were always, I can't say outcast, but we had our own group. Yeah. I mean, not that we didn't have friends in Southampton, but our main friendships all came from North Sea. What are your memories about school there? Um, did you stay in the same school system? Yes. Uh, yeah, right from first grade yeah, through. Yeah, it was just changing buildings. They were side by side. And was it the same as I know the village right in the heart of Southampton? Yeah. Or North Sea? No, no, it was Southampton. Yeah, we didn't go to school in North Sea. We were bused. You were bused to the mm -hmm. village. Um, so basically, a lot was pretty much the same as here. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Southampton now, as we know, is totally different. You know, it's yeah. it's a year round, as East Hampton is year round. You know, not that we aren't, but we're still seasonal. Summer, we're seasonal. We really are. Not as it used to be, but certainly. Do you have seasonal. family that live in Southampton still? Ah, uh, yeah, I got uh, my sister, uh, only sister, uh, and her family. And she's got four children and lots of grandchildren. So, <laughs> and they all, all live in North Sea. They're all based in North Sea. Mm -hmm. How wonderful! Yeah. Now, were your mom and uh, dad originally Southampton people, born and brought uh, here? Actually, my dad was one of four boys. He was the only one born in the States. He was born in Osnick. The family was from England. Uh, he was born in Osnick. His father came down, I think, to work on the Villa Maria in Waterville. Loved it. 
brought his family to Southampton. So from the time my dad was a young child, he lived in Southampton. My mother summered in Southampton. They were from Lindbrook, Malvern, and that area. I remember your mom and dad. Yeah. Uh, your mom was a school teacher, was mm -hmm. she not? Yeah, she taught uh, uh, in Bridgehampton, Abacanset at one time, and uh, and in Hampton Bays. She was a co-op teacher, phys ed, physical ed. Uh, what are your plans? Uh, anything for the future, or just day by day? Day by day, right here. Yeah. You know, trip here and there, uh, some traveling, but no, I want to, I'm right here. Yeah. So when you came in 63, um, that was close to not well, like the Montauk Manor was not finished then, but it was very close to maybe had a couple more years. Yeah, it was still. Do you have any memories of any of was, that? It was still open. Uh, just the the housing for the you know, workers in the back and all. We knew a few of the of the people there. The surf club was still. You know, that would be closer. You know, because as you know, when you work in those places, you don't get to leave the building very often. But you had the surf club in behind. Uh, behind us. In fact, that was about all that was there. There was a surf club. You could see right, you could see the ocean. From, from the church? Yeah, from Saint there, yeah all that was there, nothing back there. there. Rasmussen's house, uh, the house was there. Way down where Nix is now, there was a small building there. I think it was a cleaner's or something. It was a cleaner's, yeah. yeah. it was a cleaner's. And none of the motels were back there. It was just, you know, in fact, behind me was all brush and, you know, there was a chicken coop in behind the shagwan. <laughs> Mary Woods put chickens in there before I was there. But <laughs> <laughs> was Mary and Walter Woods um, the owners of Shagwan yeah. when you mm -hmm. came? Yes, they closed during the winter. When I came here in March of 63, the only thing open was White's Liquor Store, White's Drug Store, and myself on Main Street, uh, Martha Green on the corner. But other than that, there was no, even the Shagwan was closed then. It was not. Open. And Martha Green was a real estate, so by 5 o'clock they were done. Oh, yeah. So by yeah. 6 o'clock you could mm -hmm. throw a bomb down Main yeah. Street, as we often said, and no one would be hurt. Well, what we used to do was there was occasions where Dick White and I would we'd build a little fort on one side of the block, and him on the other side, we'd throw snowballs back and forth at each other just for something to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was a paradise, was it? Not? Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I'd like you to see if you could remember uh, a little bit about, um, and we're kind of evolving and moving into the late 60s, mm -hmm. early 70s, somewhere in that. Um, Leisurama, when it opened up, mm -hmm. Clove. Yeah, Tell me a little bit about your memories about that. It probably came as a shock to most of us yeah. because housing developments were not something that happened this end of the island. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, they took an awful lot of pretty rolly property and everything else and sort of leveled it off and uh, we're all like, wow, you know. <laughs> it was like double the size of the village overnight, you know, basically. Yeah, people coming in. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was probably some sort of a, the Montauk Beach Development mm -hmm. Company and owning Macy's, all of that. I think it was at Macy's that was along and Macy's with them. And, and uh, yeah, whoever were the developers, right. the actual right. developers. But it was that we were we were on Macy's main floor, yeah, yeah. selling houses, and it was it, it basically came as a shock. Like, wow, you know, this is like a small leather town here in, in Montauk. Yeah, it turned out though by and by, looking oh. over it now today, the people were wonderful. They kept the houses up. They were basically summer colony, and they. Um, it always used to amaze me because they had stone, uh, instead of lawns, a lot of them mm -hmm. had stones. stones yeah. Because <laughs> they didn't want to have to mow their lawns. It wasn't much of a lawn, but... <laughs> yeah, but they maintained their places. They did a lot of like, upkeep, so it never became anything except an asset. Well, actually, uh, I drove through the other day, Chrissy and I, and I was su pleasantly surprised at how many people have built on, redone them. You know, it is it is a nice area. Yeah, it really it is. turned out to be... Um, there was a lot of naysaying because uh, at the time I worked at the Lumberyard uh, before I was married, and uh, oh my goodness, that's all. Every contract to everybody, it was just <laughs> so negative. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it really turned out to be something very lovely, very, very and they're positive. very, very valuable today. Ooh. They're going for an incredible amount of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go again, right? Like everything else. <laughs> right. 
And um, I'm just trying to think of anything else that developed and sort of put a different face on Montauk through all those years. Okay, I can elaborate on that. When some of the land that we have on both ends of the town, when the county was going to go and buy that whole section, I will have to admit that I was like, wow, they shouldn't do, maybe they, you know, they shouldn't do that. And what, what area are you talking about? We're well, talking about the county park. Okay. That was one of the first that they, sure. before they bought Hither Woods. And probably when I look back at it, it was probably one of the best purchases we ever had. It leaves Montauk in a unique situation that we have a lot of public land that can be used for yeah. hiking, fishing, hunting on you. both ends of the town. It, it, uh, if you look uh, what's going on where they do build on East Lake Drive, I, I imagine what the whole thing would be with houses, and I'm so glad that they did, that they did. purchase. I agree with it you was a good, uh, And the uh, Hither Woods area, too, was just super to do. Well, it's left forever and ever as a virgin, mm -hmm. um, undisturbed area, right. and uh, there were so many people that said, oh, taking off the tax roll, this and that, that was always a little bit of a cry. Thank God. Yeah, I agree. I was much yeah. against it in my mind in the beginning, and yeah. I'm glad they didn't yeah. have my opinion. And I think we have wisdom, and time does that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're 40, 45, 50 years here, and you're able to look back and say there were many great choices that mm -hmm. were made, oh, yeah. and um, that certainly is one of them. Yeah, it really all, of, all of the parks, and you know, Perry Durier, which I know he was a very good friend of yours, yes, he, was. he was responsible for mm -hmm. so much of that. The, the Hills area, the walking dunes, the, and, and um, it was just part of his life it was. to be able to keep as much of Montauk the way it was as he knew as a kid. Yeah, and as you said, it's going to stay that way, and thank goodness. Yeah. It makes us unique. Yeah, right. I agree with you. Um, I don't know. Is there anything any of you girls would like to ask, Marvin? <clears throat> yeah, I I think Robin and I were talking about um, your recollections about the building and the development of Main Street, you know, from the time that you started, because you were one of a very few amount of buildings. Yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot. The whole area. Right, right. Uh, that section there next to White's liquor store, because that was all vacant, where White's uh, pharmacy is, that was all vacant. Uh, it was built on later. And the security building, if I remember correctly, the only thing used in that building was the upstairs. The, the downstairs had nothing in it. No, the downstairs, the one floor. One, yeah, there was nothing the base in it. there was yeah, the shield and then one here. Yeah, yeah. although well, no, that was the, the white elephant or the, yeah, yeah, the white. security building is the oh, one. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. the, the, right. the tutor that's, you know, the, the Earl Murphy's now. There was nothing there. I mean, I was always aghast at looking in, and here's a building that was up since the 20s, and nothing was, was, was put there. And uh, of course, then a building started popping up. You know, it was Becker's Home Center, which is now Luigi's, I guess, that went up, and more and more. Yeah. In behind me, as I said, you could literally see the ocean. landscape. You could see the ocean. Now, yeah. you might be able to just take a little peek between the buildings, but all those buildings came, you know, after I had been there. I heard when you came in 63, was there a bank in town? There was not when I moved to um, 53. Yeah, the Valley Bank was here. It, it was, was across the street where... Mr. White uh, uh, Senior built the, 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 yeah, the small store. Yeah. yeah, just past Beckers. And, and the so next that was built there. before um, yeah, where 63. The pizza, where the pizza place is in there. But they were only open in the summer. It was a summer branch. So in the winter, you draw, had to drive to... Main Street. Main Street was Valley. It was, well, it was Osborne Trust and then went... Valley. But the, for a number of years, there was no bank here in the, in, the, uh, in the winter. So there's an example of how we built. And we have, what, four banks in town now, or four buildings with banks in it. So <laughs> from a half a bank, I guess you'd call it a summer one. Amazing. That's a, that's a major. Yeah, there's a major that's thing a major right there. Thing that we have to look what, into um, for our development of Montauk, too. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, it went from half yeah. a bank, just the summer, yeah. to four banks. I remember, and I was like 16 when we moved here year-round, you had to go, you had to drive to East Hampton, East Hampton. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Come yeah. back and forth, uh -huh. summer and winter then. Right. Yeah, 
I was just trying to remember when. Yeah, when it was they, here when I got here. Sixty three. Sixties. Same way with there was no movie theater here um, <laughs> until the Playhouse opened yeah. up just the summers, and that was too late. Sat on chairs like this. Yeah. Well, Not even as a as 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 <laughs> and that was only for um, that was through Labor Day, and yeah, then that, yeah, that yeah. was wrapped up. Exactly. So we were um, even as a summer resort, it was really your home, the beach, fishing, mm -hmm. um, maybe hiking and stuff. But there really was not a lot of um, auxiliary no. uh, things to do. Actually, we always claimed that it was true up until the last. 20 years, say, when Labor Day came, yeah. that was it. You could literally roll the sidewalk up. Yeah. And I'd go back, jumping on my boat, go fishing, and do all these things, you know, but working in the store, too. And the Deep Sea Club would close down. I mean, it was just, you know, the season didn't extend it. And it, it later, it just got, you know, now it's, you know, weekends. You get a sunny weekend now, the town's quite busy. Yeah. Do you remember um, Main Street in 63? Uh, you... Jack Vaughn, uh, Tumors. Mm -hmm. was that Tumors Tackle. And, and uh, Johnny Stackle, yeah, on your side right, of the street. Right, And Martha Green in the corner. And was Walter Job or Charlie Appleyard in that little yeah, place? Yeah, actually, then? yeah, long side of me, there was, there was, it was uh, Job. That was nothing but a shack. It, it was in the back yeah. of what is now Hewitt's Cafe. And in the front was just an empty lot. The kids used to have it had you know, grass there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and they just kept piping and things in there. And then later on, if you remember, they moved across the street where the print shop is now. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I first came here, Ted, Mrs. Cook, B. Mm -hmm. Cook, had what was that store called, which is uh, the Greek place today, Seabreeze? What was the name of that? Uh, that was before my time. You're not. Younger oh, than I am, Herb Herbert. Yeah, but you went and said, <laughs> when you came here, see, you beat me by 10 years. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I, can't, I don't remember it, but it was a little, uh, um, yeah, it was a oh, little wishing well. Wishing well, wishing yeah. Well. It was before. It was a little wishing well out on Main Street, and there was two benches, and B. Cook used to cook yeah. in the back there. And later on, Riley, time. what was her name? Yeah. Had it. Potting something. Yeah. And Pot belly stove. Something like that. You know, I can remember uh, one of the frozen food companies calling me years later. They said, do you know where the, where the Blue Dolphin restaurant is or whatever, you know? And I said, no, I never heard of it, you know? And that day I walked outside and we were putting a sign in, <laughs> in the front of it. And I'm like, oh my God, they're going to think, you know, <laughs> this, this guy doesn't know what's going on across the street. But, you know, we knew it was, I had no idea what the name was going to be. No, I had never heard of it before, and I walk out and they're putting a sign up, like, oh boy. That was my second job, was at Neshi's, Neshi's Coffee yeah. Shop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't know where that place is. But that was in the 50s, too, yeah, we weren't the, here yet. No. Um, we can attest to being born in the same year, though, she and I, so you know, we won't say what year We've had was. many uh, <laughs> 1937 birthday I'll parties say you're together. Together. <laughs> you went and squealed. <laughs> um, I don't know, Robin, what about you? Do you remember anything going on in the at Camp Hero? Oh, yes, the absolutely. Military activities oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was still open. Uh, I used to go up, uh, Ron Jackson and I were quite friendly. In fact, when the deer season first started, they allowed me to go in and the, the hunt in there. And I was really probably the only civilian that they let in. Of course, I cut the deer up for them. I think that was sort of a bribe. But, uh, yeah, they were there for a number of years. And... I go around with Chrissy walking there now and I'll say this is where the NCO club was and this yeah. was the headquarters. The buildings aren't there anymore, a lot of them. Yeah. But it was yeah, it was quite active for a number of years. They had a bowling alley up there yeah, and alley. a gym. Mm -hmm. They sure did. Yeah. We used to go up to the NCO club a few of us from the firehouse just to pay a visit occasionally. I don't want to discuss no, 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 I don't want to no, discuss no. when I was up there. <laughs> 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 no, it wasn't bad, but I mean, it was not with the fire department. Well, when, I, uh, when I came here in 63, uh, like I said, single and all, the, the only place you'd get anything to eat was Hilbert's. It was open. Was the, they had a lot of Air Force On there. Old West Lake Drive. The Blue Marlin. And that was about it in March. No, Shagwan was closed. Really? Yeah, they didn't open up until... Uh, Jimmy May, had it. Well, no, Mary closed it during the winter. Yeah. From like Thanksgiving until Easter or beyond. 
and it wasn't until Jimmy came a couple of years later that I would stay that My mom worked there for yeah. Yeah. many what years. What about Trails End? Was Trails End running? Oh, yes. They were, they were yeah. Mm-hmm. Not, not in March of that year. They were summer. They were all summer things. So it was rather limited what you were, you know. My first experience with the Pizza Village, I went in, and, and nobody knew me. They were open later, I guess. And I go in, and I go like this for my wallet to pay, and went, oh. I left it back at the apartment. Well, Tina Chapukas was in there, and she, I knew her from the Hamptons. And I was so embarrassed, she had to give me money to... <laughs> to pay for what I had. <laughs> yeah. She would have had good laugh over that. No. Oh, sure. her about getting the money. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, so you were here for the, all the buildup of um, the hotels on the beach? And yes. Things mm-hmm. like that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Well, was that... Um, people in Montauk who decided to build, or was that from outside that people came in? Most of it was outside, and, and, mm-hmm. and a lot of it came half and half. Well, the one that I know definitely, and that was the first one, which we will be talking to Fred Hausnick, his sense. mother and father-in-law, though they came, like all of us from somewhere else, were Montauk people. They lived here, year round. Right. Me and uh, Sam Cox, and they built the first. The Mason Ads was the first one on the beach. Yeah, right. And um, then after that, um, I think the people that came, I can't remember who had Uncle Tom's cabins, but um, it revolved that yeah. way, you know. And yeah, then they had the East Deck to it. Yeah. Most of them that came and built, that I remember, even like Ron Joe, uh, Joan and Ron Stewart, Stewart. and uh, the people that did Atlantic Terrace, they all came within about a five, eight, maybe ten year span. Mm-hmm along the ocean in particular, they were here most of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, they might have taken a couple of winter months off, but they spent a lot of time, you know, the Ronjo people did, the right, right. ones that had it, and uh, even the Hausmans that have um, the Sands Motel. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Diane Hausman's grandfather and grandmother that built it, and then her dad and mom took it over, and I think this is the third generation of family that's still there. You also had Marisi, who had the one by the post office. Yeah, Stop 27. Stop 27. Yeah. And it was, you know, they were certainly local. Yeah, they lived year-round. Mary Woods, um, who had Shagwan at the time we moved here in the 50s, had a mo- She put up, they were like individual houses. houses yeah. What was the name of her motel? I forget. Uh, so I but she also <laughs> had a laundromat uh, on Main Street right next to the... Um, it was behind Chronix. Right next to the Chronix. It was in the Chronix building. Yeah. In the tackle um, shop. Margaret Ray used Margaret to run that. I have a picture of her in my store. So she was the front runner. I followed at the laundromat. But she used to use that in particular just to do the wash and the laundry for the motel, which was right on the ocean. A little ways down uh, from the Masonettes, as we have the pictures. The little yeah, so I now that was, I don't remember the, the name of it. So they were in the... That was in the... 50s 50, as well. Yeah, yeah, late 50s or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, um, and I think Fred will have a lot of information about uh, that because he also moved cottages from along mm-hmm. the Sound, which oh, right. is today East Deck mm-hmm. Motel on Ditch Plains. Right, right. And, and he kind building of building here together. There's a great story there on that. He's, like I say, he's been building in Montauk for all those years. Yeah. And I do think, as far as my memory with the motels and everything, and Herb, you've always been on Main Street, so more to me that the season was basically, as you said, it might have went a week after Labor Day, but that was it. some of the areas down the dock stayed open because of the fishing season. Mm-hmm. You know, one or two that might have been open there, but basically they all wrapped up. That was it. I know we, all the summer help left, and basically Chris and I, and maybe couple kids on weekends, but that was it. Yeah. And you could handle it. You could yeah. no more do that. You can't even do that in the winter anymore. Thank yeah. goodness. <laughs> That's amazing when you think it was just you and Chris running that whole store up except the summer. And um, now there's probably six or eight. Oh, all of that. Yeah. And, all, and, and, and they, they need all it. needed. They need it. So that's a plus. Yeah. Robin? 
You have some other stuff you wanted to know about? Um, well, we covered the covered the town. I'm the trying to I'm trying to keep my our minds in between fifty and say seventy, mm -hmm. seventy five of anything else that of major importance that we would want to state for history. Mm -hmm. um, the Theodore Roosevelt Park was that during wait, wasn't that in the seventies? Yeah, that was think? that was later. That yeah. was a, you know just Deep Hollow, um, and <laughs> talking about the dock area, I can, I've got pictures, I, I couldn't find them, where we used to go flounder fishing, and then you'd go around and where the Viking boats are, now there's a little beach right there, and you could pull up on the beach and go over to salad bars, have something to eat, and then go back out. And, uh, but there was actually a little beach there where they really dredged it all. Wow. Right along the dock strip. Yeah, there was a little beach there. Yeah, there was a little beach there. Well, of course, Gosman's was a little, Diner, the thing I got yeah. here, you know, yeah. few few tables in it and all. Yeah, we've watched all of that develop. Oh yeah. yeah. When I came here as a kid, uh, it was really down at the Union News thing down mm -hmm. Fish Angle, yeah. uh, that whole area on that end of town, and uh, you'd walk down the dock and all the people would be coming off the boats, and then then it all moved. after one big hurricane or a couple of big hurricanes they moved up to the yeah, they were here as we know the dock area mm -hmm. now yeah they were out of there yeah and why was that was it because it was more protected i more? would think so and i don't know the true story but i'm almost sure that is why and then you know, that because this side is oh i mean the side where it was <laughs> i don't know if wondered how they ended up there of course lake montauk years and years ago was a freshwater lake it wasn't wasn't open yeah, to the to the sea. Fish opened up. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely before our time, Herb. Definitely. <laughs> um, let me just see. Other than the fire department in town, what other organizations, if any, do you um, avail yourself of? Anything? Well, friends of Aaron. I, you know, been a grand marshal there. Yeah. Um, I'm very supportive of them, though I'm not a, a member of the organization, but I yeah. help them in any way I can. Yeah. And, uh, it's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because wouldn't you agree that before the Friends of Aaron became an entity, that it was probably Easter or after Easter, sometime in May when the season oh, began, yeah. and it really has opened up everything oh, absolutely. Uh, in March? Well, in, yes, in 65, when I transferred from North Sea Fire Department to Montauk Fire Department. Dick McGowan was the chief at the time here. And he was smart enough when we, they had the parade to let me drive a truck because North Sea came. And <laughs> at that time, they turned by the circle. They didn't come down our block. There was nothing really there. Yeah. They, the, the parades turned, except the North Sea Fire Department didn't. They came up. Across the front of the store, they wrote Herbie O'Herbert as a traitor and deserter <laughs> to the North Sea Fire Department. My mother had given them some, one of my fatigue uniforms from the service, and they hung me in effigy from the light pole. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have pictures of that, or if we want it. <laughs> Actually, um, uh, Eddie Pospisil has it on 8 millimeter. He took the whole thing on 8 millimeter. I don't know whether he still has it or not. That was in 1965. 65, yeah. They, the parade didn't go down our block because we were a non-entity. There was nothing in our block. You know, Shadwon wasn't open at the time. Sure. And they made a turn right there in the circle because they came from, well, where it was now the IGA. It wasn't anything there. Yeah. Then. The old route was from IGA yeah. down mm -hmm. to the yeah, firehouse. It's been reversed, yeah. reversed yeah. Uh, now, what year did you become Grand Marshal, Herb? 92. 1992. Mm -hmm. Did you walk the whole way? Oh, certainly. Good. Piece of cake. Now the privilege I had here was the Fireman of the Year of the Fire Department in 2000, which well, I was quite, you know, Tell me how that back. felt. Felt oh, good. Well, it was, it was sort of an unusual way to, to have it. I was going to Talladega, Alabama, to the car races, and I find out later that the Chiefs and all had come to the Chrissy and said, look, you've got to stop her from leaving town. He's got to be to the annual dinner. And she says, there's no way in the world. I mean, every year he goes to this race. And you know, so I'm in the morning. We didn't leave till like 11 in the morning from here. So I'm in the store at about 6, 6.30 in the morning. In come all the chiefs with a trophy and gave me the, <laughs> gave me the trophy at the meat counter. 
So that, that was probably the most unusual way to get it anybody has ever gotten. And they must have announced it at the annual dinner. They did. They made Chrissy go to the yeah, they, they said, because we they said we weren't going to the annual dinner. They, made, you know, they said, Chrissy, you are going to the annual dinner. <laughs> Well, you were surprised anyway. I, I was, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but they tried yeah. their darndest to convince If memory me. serves me correctly, you more than deserved it. You I did. Thank incredible. You. I was, you know, yeah. great time. It seemed like yesterday. I asked some of the friends of Aaron occasionally, what year was it? Oh, 95, 96, uh, 92. I mean, I can remember like it was yesterday. Time goes by so quickly. Herb, do you remember any big burnouts or any big events, you know, fires in, in Montauk? Well, remember? of course, Tick Hall was, <laughs> was, you know, the big brush fire. That was monumental. When was that? What, Old Hill Woods. What year oh. was that? Ooh, the 80s, I think. I, yeah, I don't remember exactly, but, I mean, we had fire departments going all over. That was the Old Hill Woods burn. It was black cloud. You couldn't let traffic through. Um, How many years before the gross was? Oh, it's a too? long, long time before it came back. Um, when you when you weren't here, I'm just gonna say when White's drugstore burned. No, no, yeah, it was before no. your time. We have to get Dick White. No, he wouldn't remember that either. We got to get some IGA burned when yeah when I was here. In fact, it was. I was going down to Florida to pick up my mother-in-law's car a, a week later, Freddie Hausnick and I. And we're gonna go fishing with Bob Keeley who lives down and we're gonna go out to the glades. Well anyway, when the, the night of the IGA fire, I said, can't leave because there would be pressure put on us as a business. So sure. I, uh, I sent uh, a couple of friends down and in those days you just give them the ticket and two gals went down and got my mother-in-law's car to bring it back. And one of them was named Fred Hausnick, and the other was Harold Herbert. And they didn't even check. In those days, they never checked the, oh, as long as you had a ticket. You know, yeah. like, I mean, you really, yeah. Yeah, yeah Sheila Ray and, and, uh, went down and uh, picked up the car. Brought it back. Brought it back. Yeah. We're just completely different times. Yeah, you know, yeah. We're living in a different. Um, I, um, I don't think there's anything other than. Let's talk about uh, thinking about the dock area, the Montauk Marine Basin. Oh yeah, burned down once. Yes, I was at both of them. Yeah, yeah. you're right, absolutely burned, right. Burned burned twice. Yeah, twice. Back then, uh, um, mm -hmm. Actually, it was uh, Darenberg and White to begin with, the Montauk mm -hmm. Marine Basin, and then after Carl had it on his own, yeah, the Redson, yeah. had you, two huge fires. Yeah, I was in both of them. Huh? I can remember standing on the dock with the pumps in front of me and wondering, all right. If something really goes, where am I going? You know, and at that point, I decided I was going at the end of the dock because you couldn't make it around. The, that was one of the shop, yeah. not the not the uh, the big building. And 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 everybody worked there winters. And oh yeah, it was all yeah. that paint and oh. all that turf. Yeah, when that big one went. That was. I mean, that was a that was a huge fire, and you really worry then about um, life and limb because mm -hmm. the firemen are. Really worked very hard, but anything of that magnitude, no yeah. one really got. It was a few couple, burns and stuff, but we didn't a couple lose anybody. Calls, thank yeah. God, yeah. Well, I I talked out. Come on, Robin. I think we covered a lot. Do you remember anything like the growth of the school when your children were going to Montauk School? Was there a lot of a lot of growth with year rounders? Or? Um, actually, um, no, not not. Till they moved basically to the East Ham school system, that it really started. I think at one point, when the air base moved out, we yeah. lost a lot of children yeah. here. The school actually took a, a drop and a huge enrolled. dive. Big dive because there was a lot of young yeah. kids in the, in, the, in the air base, and when they went, there was a, a real drop. Yeah, because up in those days, all the housing as we know it today, and, and local people have purchased those homes through the town. All of those homes that were up there were given to people that had families, mm -hmm. you know. So there was a, an, another whole community right. mm -hmm. up at the airbase, and um, every one of them had children. You know, if you were even married, just two of you, you probably wouldn't have gotten a house. 
It, it was, was people with families. It was actually trailers there too. Yeah, you're right. You know, besides the housing, they had trailers that you know that, that people lived in. Yeah. And they a lot of them lived on the economy. You know, they actually rented here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it, it's really the last maybe 10, 15, maybe it's 20 years. I don't know. Uh, with the growth, and that's basically with the Hispanics coming in and staying year-round. We were always very fortunate in the fire department for the tax base for anything to do with the town, with the school, because your numbers of people you were educating did not, um, the, the tax money was there because of uh, at least close to 50% were summer colony, that their kids were educated elsewhere, that you didn't stay here year round. So you didn't like the fire department and the police department. The services were not to what they are today, where we have a much larger year round population. Oh, yeah. I don't know what I, it is. I don't but, know either, but it's certainly yeah. five or six times yeah. what I remember. It might be yeah. 10 times, I don't know. What do you owe all the development to over Montauk. the years? Just the in Montauk. Get love fishing, it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love it. It's so much out here to do, and you just have to love Montauk. And it's unique. It's not the Hamptons. It's the unhampton. There's no question of that in my mind. And uh, I think that's yeah. the reason. They just people just they even go through the Hamptons in the summertime. And I say to myself, my gracious, these people who drive from the city really have to love it out here because it's you know, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had occasion for years and years to drive now. Occasionally I'll work for Mickey, and I'll go and pick things up the island and move trucks around. Also, I have occasions to go west. I drove through Sag Harbor more times last summer than I've been in Sag Harbor my whole life because you couldn't get through the Hampton. You had to go, yeah, you know, through yeah, Noyak, North, North Sea, Noyak. the whole nine yards. And that's because, a beautiful ride. Oh, it's I lovely. Love it, you know, yeah. and of course, being from North Sea, I know the, the back back roads that you know, yeah. the tourists don't know. But I go through the Hamptons, forget it. And you know, look at it, you really have to love it to go get this you know. I do think the development and what have you is attributed to the geography. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful area of the world and once people come they really um, oh, yeah. they want to be here. But I think there's been the development is so much and the traffic business is so bad that there are people as much as they'd love to hear have, have settled elsewhere upstate and that because they can't yeah, too much can't bear the traffic. traffic. And in honesty there's another thing we lived through in the 70s was halt the highway, remember? Mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. How many people have nightmares about that today? Oh, man, my God. oh, man. Well, yeah, because the businesses felt that they were going to lose business because people were going to yeah. drive past. Now, yeah. everybody's They're like, losing it because where are you gonna people put can't get them. And now, yeah. Yeah. the only place I could even think you could do it, uh, limited, would be along the, the uh, access to the railroad, but that's you know, not in our lifetime, anyway. The thing was is that it was like... Um, huge, huge cry, and it really was this whole big political upheaval, and it was halt the highway mm -hmm. because if you make an access road, people are going to, too many people are going to come out here. Keep it small, keep it limited, and people won't come. And look at us now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only thing that's really frightful about it all, the vacationer is one thing, but it's the health and welfare to try to get people in harm's way from out here, with a heart attack and this and that, if it wasn't for oh. the helicopters or whatever they use, yeah, you can't action. get people even to Southampton. No, it's tough. In, in a time frame to to save them or try to save them. Well, I know talking to you know, drive the ambulance, there are times that the ambulance going from here to Southampton is in the oncoming lane, darn near all the way to Southampton. When you get that, say, a Sunday afternoon, they're backed up to East Hampton. Yeah. So the ambulance literally has to go out into the oncoming lane and progress that way. Because and the people can't pull over in, in a lot of cases. Or they and don't then you hear say it or, that they're in harm's way with yeah. that. Because, yeah. I mean, that's a very dangerous thing. Oh, yeah. go 45 minutes like that. Yeah. So well, do, you, do you see the demise of volunteerism? Like, you know, the groups, all, all the groups that we have here. The, you know, the MBA, the Historical Society, the, the firemen. Mm -hmm. you, see, you see declines in those numbers with the people that are out now? Are they, are they becoming involved in the community that they live in, the new people? I certainly hope they do. 
Uh, speaking for the fire department, uh, as I said before, we really have a problem with volunteering there because when you volunteer there, it's a, it's a big, big commitment. It takes a lot of time. Uh, and I'm not talking about putting a fire out or going to an accident or going on an ambulance call. The training is just incredible. Uh, the first year, you're practically not home two or three days a week for the, for the training. You're going to other fire departments and, and what have you. And the ambulance crews are just, uh, the, the training that they go through. And they have to, you know, it's, it's tough. The other organizations, I, I can't speak for them. I don't really you know, yeah. know what they're. I think all are. organizations uh, that I can see, um, whether I belong to it or not, are complaining about the fact that they don't have enough volunteer people, that the people, the younger people, don't, don't participate. Uh, and in fairness to the younger people, there's you, the, the norm is two people are working mm -hmm. in order to stay here full time, plus raising a family. So in order to give of yourself in any kind of a volunteer thing and do it well, it takes a lot of time. And there's one of the major problems with the fire department. Yeah. You look for young people, but the young people have got children and two jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Herbert, I think we're just about wrapping right. it up. Um, I want to thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you for having me. And, uh, um, you know, I think you're a credit to this community thank and you. to everybody who knows you. And um, anything else that you may have in photos and stuff, Robert, I'm going to continue to look as I stop do right in here. And thank you for what you brought. Thank you for okay. having me. And, uh, it scares me when they start talking about old timer, you know, and then they call me up. I'm like, wait a minute, what is this? <laughs> it was so funny this morning when I called him about the time, and he said, Joan, I'm not old. <laughs> and it's, what's funny is, is that he is three months older than I am. I never let him forget it. And I said, no, you're not. <laughs> But it's we're here now in a time when we have to record what we did. Yes. Because we're yeah. already in, we're into the late 50s, into the 70s, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, they've got to get me in here one day, too. I have to yeah. <laughs> put down some of my memories from the 50s. <laughs> um, but it's just um, really taking part in this wonderful town and putting as much history down. And from a person working and living here's perspective, that's the thing, right. you know. Right. That's the beauty of it. Well, I've just about loved every minute of it. So. Yeah. We miss you down street, I tell you. Uh, that. Well, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you what, truthfully, I don't miss the 24 7. I do miss the people. Yeah. I really, really miss, because I, I, I'm a people person. I like yeah. to, you know, yeah. chat yeah. and this and that. And the gossip, I don't hear all the gossip. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to get on the internet. <laughs> No, I mean, they never had to do that. Herbs. Everybody <laughs> came past through the door from seven in the morning. I'm there every day, you know, to pass yeah, through and do through, whatever. Yeah. And, you know. yeah. The girls are doing a great job, <laughs> but uh, you have been a fixture. Yeah, yeah and uh, I don't know that that would probably be the biggest thing I would miss. Yeah, the people. Would be the people yeah, in the heartbeat. I, I, yes, I really, really miss, you know, because I was always there early. I'd have my own crew come in from six to you know, when we open, and then they all have coffee, and we solve all the problems of the world, blah, 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 and then when they turned off the lights, it was like, you know what, running for cover, because they had all phew, gone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I say opened up the back door. Opened the back door. A couple of times in the past 20 years when I had to go down very early, either for a repair or somebody to come in, and that was the one place that was open, but you knew you went in the Around the Family parking lot in the back door, the screen door would be open and you could get your coffee. And there would be John Raid and Freddie House, Nick, and Eddie Pugh. Eddie Pugh. Eddie yeah. Pugh, I knew, I knew when that back door closed, it was 6 30. And Hank Zabrowski, right together, yeah. brother yeah, was it great. The only thing missing there was the pot belly stove. Yeah, it probably no. was there one day, but other than that. That no, wasn't when I was around. But no. <laughs> no. We done. Thanks, Benny.